Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to graph a system of linear inequalities. And in this case, we have three linear inequalities. Now, I'm going to kind of work through this a little bit uh, quicker here, because we've kind of gone over. Hopefully, we know how to graph linear inequalities um, in a little case. So <laughs> I don't really know. Um, so, but in, to graph a system of linear inequalities, it doesn't matter if you have two, it doesn't matter if you have five. Basically, what we want to do is be able to graph each one of these linear inequalities separately. And the way that I always like to do it is I like to think of my inequalities as equations first. So if I have my y axis, my x axis, let's start with the first one. This, if I was thinking about that equation, it's just x equals negative 8. So I go over in the x axis, I go over to negative 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And it's not a point, it's a line. I mean, x always equals negative 8. It doesn't matter if y is 10, y is negative 5, x is always going to equal negative 8. So therefore, that's going to be my line. But before I just draw a nice line like an equation, I go back over to my inequality, and I need to be able to make sure, is, this going to be, is my boundary line going to be a part of my solution or not? Since x is greater than negative 8, not greater than or equal to, um, it's going to be dashed, meaning it's not going to be a part of my solution. Okay. Then I go over to y is less than or equal to negative 1. And again, now I go on the y-axis, and I go down to negative 1. And just like my reasoning with, with x equals something, when y equals something, it doesn't matter what x equals. It doesn't matter if x equals negative, one, negative 8. It doesn't matter if x equals positive 8. y is always equal to negative 1. So therefore, I'm going to draw a line. However, unlike um, this inequality, here I have less than or equal to. It's the bottom line that that or equal to tells you that your boundary line is going to be a part of your, um, part of your solution. So that's going to be a solid line. All right, and now the last one is y equals negative 2x minus 4. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this is in slope-intercept form. So therefore, I know that this is my y-intercept, which is a coordinate point which lies on the y-axis. And this is going to be my slope. And it's very important for us when we're writing slope that we write it as a fraction. And when we write a negative slope, we can have it as negative 2 over 1. We could have it as 2 over negative 1 because it's negative. But we do not want to do negative 2 over negative 1 because that equals positive 2. So when you're doing this with the negative, because remember slope, you know, a lot of times we think of this as rise over run. Basically, the change in the y coordinates over the change in the x coordinates between any two points. So it doesn't matter um, how you have that. Let's just work with the one I had up top. So the first thing I do is I plot my y-intercept, which is negative 4. So 1, 2, 3, 4. Then I'm going to go down 2, because the change in y-coordinates is negative 2 between any two points. So I'm going to go down 2 and then over 1. Okay. Then again, I look, at, I look at my inequality symbol, and I see that it's less than. So therefore, it's going to be dashed, not a part of my solution. And I'll go ahead and graph it. Now, the last thing we want to do is go through our testing. And when doing testing, basically what we're going to want to do is determine where are we shading. You know, we know if our boundary lines are a part of the solution or not a part of the solution, but what about the points above and below the solution or above and below the boundary line? Are those going to be true or are those going to be false? So to do that, we need to pick a test point that does not lie on any of the lines. And 0, 0 is going to be your best test point to always choose as long as the line doesn't go through it. Because if you're testing a point that's on a line, you're just testing if it's part of the solution or not a part of the solution, which we can easily determine by looking at the inequality symbol. So I'm going to choose 0, 0 because none of my lines go through it. And 0, 0 seems pretty simple. And all I'm basically going to do is remember 0, 0 is a coordinate point. It has an x and a y coordinate. So I'm basically just going to plug in the values into each inequality and determine if it's true or false. So let's do x is less than negative 8. So now I plug in 0 in for x because I don't have a y. Is 0 greater than negative 8? That is true. So since it's true for this inequality, I'm going to shade towards the test point. All points that are on the side of the line of the test point are also going to be true. Then I do y is less than or equal to negative 1. Plug 0 in for y, because I don't have a way to plug for x. And that says 0 is less than or equal to negative 1. That is false. So since my test point is false for here, I'm going to shade away from it, or on the opposite side. And I'm just going to do kind of arrows um, just until I get to the shade, because sometimes it gets a little too hectic when I'm doing all these lines of shading. Uh, last one I'll do is y is less than negative 2x minus 4. Now I have an x and a y I can plug in. So I'll plug a 0 in for y. 
zero and for x, and I have zero is less than negative four. So for this line, that is false. So therefore, again, I am going to be shading away. So by going down to the right and below, you can see that my feasible region is going to be this area right here. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you graph a system of linear inequalities. Thanks.